Welcome back to Super Metroid Omega Boss Battles. We've had a name change. We've had a lot of things actually happen since uh, my little technical problems. Finally got figured out thanks to Otacon. Or thanks to hitting stuff with a hammer. Take your pick, really. That's how technical works. So, let's pick up all these missile packs. And since this area is now blocked off, I can't get up here yet. I'm going to go run the long way around, and I'm going to get you guys up to date on what changes have happened. So, see you in a second. Now, he's introduced a different story. He changed the opening. It kind of makes sense as to what happens later in the ROM hack, which is a nice touch. Then he throws this in. He throws a mention to me and Oreo the Wolf. Oreo the Wolf is a guy who's also playing through the game as well. He's changed the Ceres, the Ceres space station around a little bit. Adding these little blocks he had to destroy, but for some reason you get stuck in. I don't know, because of the angle of the stairs. And then he does this. He murders civilians! Oh, the humanity! And the body's on the ceiling for some reason. I don't get that. When you fly into the planet, I'm not calling it by its name because I still can't pronounce it right, he's changed the intro bit. The area has changed slightly. There's still four missile packs. That doesn't change. And you have to do a fancy little uh, morph ball jump to try to get up here to actually continue going on. It's not that hard to do, thankfully. This is one thing I don't understand, though. The missile room, the stock room before Kraid, now has the eye door on it. That's not supposed to be there. That's supposed to be at the other door, but it doesn't show up. Now, right before Fantoon, there's a recharge kit and there's a super missile pack. But when you make the second run around, when the power's on, they don't work. I don't understand that. The last little small change he did, besides not changing the background for some reason, I don't know why, he put the high jump boots down this little ramp. And if you want to get back to the ship, you don't have to use super missiles anymore. You can just stand on that, and boom, you're back at the ship. And that brings us to here, where we can actually walk through this door without actually having to shoot it. I don't know why. But now we're back to the silent hilly door disappearing area we were at before. Now we're actually on to new and exciting things! Hooray! But I'd like to address something first before we get on to said new and exciting things. Last video, which was a while ago, sorry about that technical difficulties, blah blah blah, blah yada yada, you get the point. Either way. Last video I asked for everyone's opinion on what they think of the ROM hack. Do they think it's a good idea? Do they think it's a bad idea? Would they play it? Blah blah blah. All that. I was surprisingly overwhelmed with the amount of responses I got on it. It was almost 700 comments and uh, a dozen or so video responses, which are really nice. Thanks a lot for doing those guys. Basically, uh, it was an overwhelmingly positive response, which kind of surprised me. But some people did echo the same sentiments I actually had about the game. If it would be nice as an extra thing, but not as a like a standalone game. Metroid itself has to be exploration. That's basically what sold it, and why the creator of the Virtual Boy made it back then and died in a car crash after he made freaking the Virtual Boy, which I don't think very many people are gonna be too sad about. Sorry, Gunpei Yokoi. Uh. But let's get back to the actual bosses, huh? We're fighting Bot Woom, which I just call Anaconda, because it's honestly, it, it's basically what he is. He takes about ten super missiles to the head. He's a pain in the butt sometimes, but he can go down relatively fast. There are tricks to killing him, but you, they require power bombs, which I do not have, so if anyone's wondering why I'm not using the special tricks, that's why. There are a lot of tricks, actually, to killing bosses like him. And even the boss coming up next, but I can't do them, so I'm just gonna, you know, hit the spam button. This, this is not working very well. Sad thing is, one of the test recordings, which kind of I lost because of all the technical problems, I killed the guy in like five seconds. It was hilarious, but I can't use it because it's like triple the speed and no sound, and it's just, ugh. I've been trying to fix this for so long. I'm just agitated, so I just, I want to get back to this. Let's, let's not talk about that. So now that we've killed Batwoon, that was pretty easy. Just walk along this wider. Oh my god! Yeah, I know, I'm sorry. It's like a Metroid Zoo or something like that. And we don't have an ice beam, so we can't get rid of him. There's no point in shaking him off. So let's just run! Get away from me, you freaky things. Jellyfish. There we go. I mean, they don't go through the door, thankfully. Fake spikes! If anyone has played through the original Super Metroid, they're gonna recognize this area. And the first thing they think is, oh, there's a bunch of secrets here. <coughs> Sorry. Pretty much all the secrets of the area of the main game are gone. 
some of them still exist like this. This is where you have to go to fight the next boss. But everything else is mostly just changed around. So we go in here, we get an energy tank. Almost fill up our line there. So we're going to be fighting... The name, the name is... Dragon. It's kind of a play on dragon. Dragon is annoying. Not in the way Crocomire is, because you can actually kill Dragon without dying. It just it takes a while. Plus, he was nice enough to... Aerial Blast was nice enough to actually add in an extra E-tank there, so if you run low on health, you can just pick it up and recharge your health meter. There's one thing that does bug me. Actually, two things. There are two quick ways to kill a Dragon. I can't do them, because I don't have the grappling beam or the speed boost. So I have to do it the old-fashioned way, with ducking and missiles. Dragon's attacks are pretty standard, actually. He... He, I don't, I don't know, is it he or she? Does anyone actually really know what species or what sex it is? Regardless, it has like two main patterns. It'll do like a little drive-by there, and it'll do this weird, goopy Spider-Man webbing type thing, which will capture you, but if you wiggle the buttons really fast, you get out relatively fast. So the only way to really damage him, and I keep calling it him, just it's a habit, sorry, is to shoot at it with missiles. Like, basically it does a strafing run, you have to do the same thing. It's kind of annoying, actually, because eventually he gets so fast that you can't do anything. After Maybe after the next strafing run, I'll, you'll see exactly what I mean. One, two, three! See what, okay, he's picking up speed pretty fast there now, see? A little bit hard to see what he's doing, so you just gotta start going Rambo style here. Honestly, I hate this fight. Can we cut to something more entertaining? Uh... Whoa! That was freaky. That was pretty awesome, actually. <laughs> Can we do that again? Seriously, this boss fight just takes a long time without the power -ups. As a kid when I was playing Super Metroid, I always did the shortcut with the, with the grappling beam. Since you can't do that in, meta in Omega boss battles, you're stuck doing it the long, boring way. This is take forever. Although you do feel like a badass when you're just pumping someone full of missiles. On energy tanks. For some reason, when he gets almost dead, he slows down. I don't know why. I can probably just fire rapid fire missiles and kill him from here. Or not, apparently. Don't prove me wrong, you stupid dragon. Why aren't you dead yet? <laughs> For crying out loud! It's a good thing the missiles are set to 10 now, otherwise it, this would take even longer. i would be running out of missiles to do with charge shots. No, seriously, die! This is ridiculous. Sometimes it's almost easier to get caught and just bait him into doing it, because he'll always come from the right side, or from the left side there, if you let him grab you. I don't see how people actually enjoyed this fight in the normal game without the power-ups. Oh shit, I'm out of missiles. This is not good. Ah, finally! Jeez! Babies come in and eat it or something, I don't know. Push it out of, the, out of view. We collect our rewards and we move on. Thankfully. I hate that fight. And there's still more... There's like one more annoying fight left, really, in the game. And it's Ridley. And Ridley's just more of a fun fight than anything. The, the Super Metroid bosses, they're not that memorable. It, it kind of sucks, really, in a way. This is why I'm not too impressed with the ROM hack myself, but that's because I'm not a hardcore Metroid player. If anything, playing this has made me actually go back and enjoy the original Super Metroid again. But we're going to close it up here for a sec, because I'm going to pick up the speed booster. 
Some power bombs, finally. And the best attack in the game. The screw attack. Letting me space jump constantly and do tons of damage, which will basically rip through any normal enemy. <sighs> so we're gonna end in here for now. I'm gonna put I'm gonna put the last two parts up together. So you'll see this one up, and then in a few, in like an hour or so, you'll see the next one. So, I'll see you then. Have a good one.